You call this cooperation between Harbingers. Cooperation involves communication, you know. <laughs> Don't take it to heart, child. Besides, aren't you happy that you got to skip the formalities and bring chaos to the land? I'm sure you must have enjoyed that. Oh, it seems that some of your friends have arrived. Hey, it's Zhang Li and Child! And... You! You're also one of the Harbingers? <laughs> it's you two. I believe we've met once before. In the city of Bards, was it? I'm glad you still remember my name. Ah, right. I imagine that it must have been rather hard to forget watching helplessly as something precious was snatched away from your friend. Well, if it isn't you two, this is our first time seeing each other since Liyue was nearly wiped off the map. This is certainly a bit awkward, wouldn't you say? Hmm. Paimon knew that we should never have trusted a Fatui Harbinger. Oh, now don't say that. Sure, I may have misled you, but I never had anything against you personally. Besides, I thought we were getting along quite well together, didn't you? Except for that little tussle we had at the end. <laughs> Nothing personal. We just have different views, that's all. Of course, you may very well hold this against me, but that's up to you. The real deceivers here are Senora and Zhongli. Curse them for leading me on. So actually, I think... Stop wasting time, child. There'll be plenty of time to chat once I'm through here. You remember the agreement, Morax. Now, if you would be so kind. The Gnosis, please. What in the world are you talking about? The contract is fulfilled. That which thou seeketh is now bestowed unto thee. For my promise is solid as stone. <sighs> How sanctimonious. What? So you're the Lord of Chiu? No, wait, that's an exciting twist and all, but why give the Gnosis to the Fatui? I do not give it for free. I give it as agreed upon in the contract, for it is a matter solely between the Tsaritsa and I. Yeah, you don't think you went a little bit too far with that whole fake death thing? Everyone was preparing the ceremony for you and splat! This big dragon falls out of the sky and all of Lyric goes into an uproar! Talk about a disaster! <laughs> Gathering all the forces that had been bubbling behind the scenes, and then stirring them together in a pot that was bound to boil over. That's what he wanted to see, am I right? Wait, what? Perhaps it's best that I explain. As you know, I've dwelt upon this world for more than 6,000 years. I witnessed the founding of Liyue together with the Adepti 3,700 years ago. Even boulders that can withstand whirlpools will erode with the passing of time. Until one drizzly day, as I was strolling along the harbor, I heard a merchant tell one of his workers. I stood motionless among the crowds, asking myself. Oh, Zhang Li. But as I began to consider relinquishing my divine role, I soon discovered that many reasons still remained to not hastily depart. Was Liyue the city I had dwelt in for so long? So I feigned my own death, and gathered the cast of Child, the Adepti, and the Liyue. That's right, which is why I continued to safeguard the Gnosis until now. So you mean that if the Chaos ever reached the point of no return, you would simply appear and use your divine powers to bring Lila back under control? Of course, and it would have been all too easy for him too. Just as a child quickly matures after losing their parents, so has Liu matured when faced with the death of its deity. I was pleasantly surprised with the finale of the show that you all put on. Why, you even deserved an encore. The Adepti deserve the greatest applause considering their years of seclusion. 
They hardly recognized the city, yet faced with such a crisis, they exerted the greatest amount of restraint. Not only did they manage to cooperate with the Chising, but in the end, they even tried to understand the heart of the people. And hats off to the emissary dispatched by the Cryo Archon to fulfill our contract, Signora. She managed to keep everything she knew in strict confidence. All the while, I carried on as Zhongli, and fulfilled the traditions of Liu in this mortal form. These things were all a part of my script. The only unforeseen plot twist was the conduct of the Liu Chixing. I had expected them to do no more than the Adepti. They seized the opportunity to supplant Liu as divine protectors, and used the subsequent power vacuum left by my death to quickly gain complete control of Liu. Huh? That doesn't sound good at all! Ha! <laughs> On the contrary. I think it is excellent. Hey, what about me? Doesn't anyone feel the least bit of remorse for deceiving me? You've practically kept me in the dark! <laughs> I think that thanks would be more appropriate. You certainly played no small part in all of this. If you hadn't created the pressure of a battle between mortals, a Depti, and a god, the lump of coal resting in the hands of the Geo Archon. Huh? Just whose side are you on, mocking me like that? Are you itching for a fight? Be that as it may, you've come out of this as the hero of Liu. I, on the other hand, will be forever prescribed as a disturber of the peace, no? <laughs> well then, with the Gnosis in my possession, I have no use for such idle chatter. Ah, fine. I'll meet you there later. I'm not sharing a boat with the likes of you. <laughs> Do as you wish. Now then, is there anything else you wish to ask me? Realistically speaking, there is no such thing. Huh? However, I am the god of contracts. For thousands of years, I have made countless contracts. If the deal was of no benefit, then I certainly would not be inclined to agree to it. My agreement with the Cryo Archon will be the last of my contracts as the Geo Archon. My contract to end all contracts. As for the bargaining chip that the Tsaritsa used to balance the scales, uncover that answer for yourself in your future journeys. I mean it all still Ah, uh, forget <gasps> Hear ye all Though a dragon soars ageless as the mountains Gods and Adepti live glorious lives But both light and shadow have their seas Rumors and hears having been thwarted in his trial Wreck nor are they to believe street-born rumors or indulge in baseless speculation. Uh, um, Daimon needs a translation on what the Chi Sing's announcement said. <sighs> so that's how they're spinning it. Something feels off. Why would 
they suddenly give up looking for the murderer? Could the Cheesing already have known that Rex Lapis wasn't dead? Hmm. Did Zhang Li tell them in secret after his gnosis changed hands? Exactly, right? <laughs> It's Ningguang and Kuching. Are they saying something? Are their speeches over? As said previously, Rex Lapis's soul returning to the heavens is the end of the contract. And it is also the end of an era. 3,700 years of contracts burnt and reduced to ash. We, the people of Liyue, were indeed prosperous. But blinded by our prosperity, we forgot that time can be pitiless. The long, unending dream of our Archon walking among us. Hmm. Now that we have awoken from our dream, we must learn to say farewell. Will you stand with us as we reestablish our contracts? As we build a new age of prosperity? So concludes the words of Her Eminence the Tianquan. Does Her Eminence the Yuhang have anything to add? Huh? Is she looking this way? Traveler. Yikes! She really is looking our way! Is that the Traveler who they say defeated the ancient god? So young! The Liyue Qixing always repay their debts. And as you have heard, our eyes see far and our reach is long. Name your price. You deserve that much. Well, could you help me put up some missing person posters? Uh, huh. About it. Well. As for them, hey, Zhong Li, look at this. Everyone in Liu is caught up in their emotions, thinking that they'll never see Rex Lapis again. And here you are looking all relaxed. <laughs> Why would I not feel more at ease after laying down the burden I have borne for 3,700? Right. If the two of you can spare the time, I should treat you to a meal at the Xinyue kiosk. Ha! <laughs> that sounds like big talk, Zhang Li. Paima might have believed you if you were treating us to some third round knockout, but you'd have to pay out your nose just to stand inside Xinyue kiosk. Are you sure you can afford it? Hmm... You're right. I do like the Mora. But why would Morax lack Mora? As the Rex Lapis Morax, I can easily create Mora. But since I have chosen to walk this earth as the mortal Zhongli, I should abide by the same rules that mortals do. When I was journeying with you, Though I still had the Gnosis in hand, I knew that I must soon retire from my role as an Archon. Oh, no wonder! Paimon gets it now! But since you weren't used to not being able to just make more Mora as and when you wanted to, you had to try becoming a parasite to society. Well, we were only spending Fatui money. In the City of Commerce, we do not merely exchange money or goods. The Archon Morax could never experience life as the true mortal Zhongli could. <laughs> I must thank you for that. I will treasure the memories that I made as Zhongli, traveling the streets of Liyue with you. That is true. But there is no journey that does not end. No meetings without partings. Hmm. Paimon thinks that we should make a move and continue our search for the Seven. I fear that continuing your journey may be difficult. 
the nation that neighbors Liyue by sea, Inazuma is presently closed. The Electro Archon Ball. And just as the people of Liyue preferred to call me Rex Lapis, she too goes by another name among locals in Inazuma. Um, Hyman thinks we've heard that one before. That is the case. And since Raiden is also the Shogun of the Inazuma Bakufu, people call her the Raiden Shogun. That said, though people at the wharf were saying that the situation in Inazuma is very tense, Paimon doesn't remember that always being the case. It wasn't that bad last year. Zhongli, since you're Rex Lapis, shouldn't you know something about what's happening there? Just how did Inazuma become a closed nation? It's because of visions. Visions? When faced with circumstances beyond their control, humans often bemoan their lack of power. But if a person shows true strength of will at a desperate and fateful moment in their life, the gods will look upon them with favor. This is what visions are. Magical foci bestowed upon those who have been acknowledged by the gods. Uh-huh. That's how people in Tevat see it. But starting from last year, the Raiden Shogun began promulgating the Vision Hunt Decree. Vision Hunt Decree? Yes. It was an order to seize all visions within Inazuma's borders and to inlay them upon the hands of a statue of the Thousand-Armed Hundred-Eyed God. They want to seize visions? But why? Aren't visions blessings from the gods? I should think that in the Raiden Shogun's eyes, it is precisely because they are divine blessings that they should be under the sole dominion of divinity. Whoa, that's hard. The Animo Archon is the god of freedom, and the Geo Archon is the god of contracts. For her part, the Raiden Shogun is the god of eternity. It seems as though she has finally decided to eliminate any unstable elements that could pose a threat to her eternal realm. The fact that even I, the oldest of the seven, have now passed away, will only strengthen her resolve to pursue eternity. Knowing her, she must have again quoted that adage she is most fond of when proclaiming that decree to her people. Seven ideals for seven gods. And of these, eternity is nearest unto heaven. All right then. Was there anything else you wish to know? <laughs> ah, that was a good one. Failing a divine trial. How they came up with that excuse, I will never know. That said, the reason why the Chi-Sing were so eager to resolve the incident and stop pursuing the culprit was indeed because they received news in secret that Rex Lapis was not dead. I hinted as much to the Adepti as well. How did I accomplish that, you ask? Hmm. Uh, have you ever heard of this particularly convenient Adepti art known as gifting dreams and visions? All right then. Was there anything else you wished to know? That's right! Zhongli, now that you don't have your Gnosis, what's going to happen to all the Mora in Tevat? Since Morax is dead, are they all just gonna disappear? Also, isn't the Golden House the only mint in the entire continent? Will it even- The Mora present now- <sighs> Yes, this is indeed a major issue from a financial standpoint. Uh, well, I suppose we'll just leave such troublesome matters to the Liyue Chising to debate. Then, did you at least set some private funds aside for yourself? Oh, a private fund. Hmm. This does seem like a good logical common sense idea. <sighs> it's a shame. What's a shame? It's a shame that I didn't think of it at the time. All right then, was there anything else you wished to know? Well then, I suppose... <laughs>